Thank you, Kim. <laughs> that was a very nice introduction. And thank you all for coming to this session today. Um, I want to begin by making sure you have some materials that were up at the front. So there are three things I'm hoping that you have. Um, two of them um, I'd like you to borrow. And these are just pencils and notepads. Excellent. And um, so as you leave, you can drop those off where you pick them up. And then the third item I'm hoping you'll keep, and um, this is a handout that I've made that includes some of the main points from the session today. And we'll also be looking at some of the writing prompts that are on this sheet and talking about them in small groups. And so do make sure that you have one of these. And um, if you're in an isolated position, maybe scooch closer to um, some friends so that you have people to talk with when we get to that part of the session. Um, so this presentation today is based on the idea that having students write in STEM courses can help them learn course content and improve their critical thinking ability. And my goal for this session is that you leave with an idea for a writing prompt that you could use in a course that you teach and that you'll also feel armed with some time-saving strategies that make assigning writing feel possible. I'd like to begin by asking you a few questions. I'm curious how many of you have assigned writing in a STEM course before? Excellent, okay, thank you. And how many of you worry about the amount of time it takes to deal with student writing? Good question. So, I'm thinking in terms of how much time it takes you as an instructor to give feedback on student writing, or that's, that's the question. Okay. So, okay, so, yes. quite a few hands. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, and then my third question is, I'm curious how many of you have a recommendation that you might like to share based on your experience assigning writing? Excellent. Okay, so we'll try to have some time at the end for you to share um, those tidbits. Thank you. Um, so much of what I will talk about today is from this book. It's called Engaging Ideas, The Professor's Guide to Integrating Writing, Critical Thinking, and Active Learning in the Classroom. It's written by John Bean, who is a professor emeritus at Seattle University. And he has studied writing across the curriculum for several decades and has led many workshops on this topic. And I'd just like to recognize um, Noelle Beckman, who recommended this book to me. And she's back <laughs> there. Thank you. Um, so let's see. The talk today has five parts. I'm going to start by reviewing the connection between writing and critical thinking. I'm going to address some concerns that are common among professors who are considering whether to incorporate writing in their course or not. We'll look at some examples of short writing prompts with the idea that a short writing prompt could be a way to have your students think critically but not take quite so much of your time as an instructor. We'll also look specifically at some tips for how to efficiently deal with student writing, especially in medium or large classes. And finally, we'll look at a couple of examples from USU professors who have incorporated these ideas. Okay. Uh, okay. So to begin, when writing is assigned in a STEM course, there, it's often associated with two possible outcomes. One might be that the students will learn how to communicate in the style of that specific discipline. And a second purpose can be that the students could learn how to think critically about questions in that discipline. And by thinking critically, that I break down into a few parts. One is that students are identifying assumptions. One is that they're questioning their assumptions. And um, three, they're considering alternative perspectives. And so what we'll focus on today is more this second purpose, and we'll be looking at writing assignments that target different aspects of critical thinking that students can practice in these courses. Okay. 
One concern that's common among professors is that incorporating writing could take time away from course content. And I like to counter this idea by remembering from my personal experience as a student that there's often a big difference between how much a professor might cover and how much I might actually learn in that course. And the idea is that by having students write, we're having them think deeply about something and that the learning that they do will potentially last longer for them. Another concern, especially with more technical courses might be that writing isn't a suitable activity for what the learning objectives are. And that definitely can play in. Writing can be used in different ways. What we will look at today, though, is a variety of different writing exercises. And so by opening our concept of what a writing assignment is, we might see that writing could be useful even in some very technical courses. And then there is this um, real concern <laughs> that um, assigning writing in a course can bury a professor in paper grading. And so the question is, how can we not, <laughs> how can we not um, make that an issue? And fortunately, there is some research by the National, Student Surve or National Survey of Student Engagement that shows that the quality of the writing assignment matters more than how long the assignment is. That's something that can really help us because by having your students write something short, you can potentially get them thinking the way that they need to, to advance their skills. Uh, and it doesn't take as much of your time. We'll also talk a little bit today about some time-saving strategies. Okay. So, we're going to look at a few categories of assignment types. All of these are shorter assignment types, kind of based on the idea that shorter assignments could take less professor time. And I've grouped these into four categories. There are um, formal writing assignments where students are working on formal essays. And then there's also exploratory writing as a like, uh, main category. And um, within the, each of those, we have sort of a range of assignment lengths that are associated with less or more instructor time. I'll begin by looking at an example of a micro theme, and then we'll um, discuss in small groups some ideas for short essay prompts. Okay. So this is a micro theme. This is a short formal writing assignment where students are writing less than a page in response to this prompt. This is from a psychology course, and I'll read it to you. In the morning, when Professor Catlove opens a new can of cat food, his cats run into the kitchen, purring and meowing and rubbing their backs against his legs. What examples, if any, of classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and social learning are at work in this brief scene? Note that both the cats and the professor might be exhibiting conditioned behavior here. You and some fellow classmates have been discussing this problem over coffee, and you are convinced that some of your group are confused about the concepts. Write a one-page essay to set them straight. So I'm curious, what are some things that you think work well about this prompt? And I'm going to pass whoever wants to answer this, this uh, microphone so that we can hear you on the recording. So what do you think works well in this short writing prompt? One of the really obvious things is that it's very clear how long you want it to be mm -hmm. um, and what you want them to answer. Excellent. Okay. So it's clear how long it should be and what their task is. Excellent. Okay. Does anyone else have something that they see that they'd like to add? It's a, yeah, so this could be less than a page, like half a page. So they're limited to 250 words? Yes, okay. in this assignment. Yes, it's, it's very short. Yes, good question. Okay. Oh, 
<laughs> I think what also works is that you've given them kind of a semi-meaningful context in which to apply it. So it's not just a recitation of the meanings of the classical conditioning, opera conditioning, and social learning, but it's, it's a way to give folks a sense of why they might need to understand that or explain it to someone else. Yes. That's really excellent. Thank you. So there's context given in this that makes it seem meaningful. OK, and then I saw another hand here. No, I, I hate to say I was going to do the same thing, but the idea is it's an interesting prompt. So it's, it's yeah. kind of fun. It's playful. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so it has a little bit of humor. Oh, let's do it. OK. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously, yeah, they were being playful. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a fun scenario also. Um, OK, so that's. Um, that's one type of thing is sort of creating a small scenario and then having people write a short response could get them thinking. Um, next, we're going to look at some short essay examples. And this is where um, there are three types that I'd like to highlight that I thought were interesting suggestions. One is where students are given a thesis by the instructor and their task is in a short essay to support either the positive or the negative side of the thesis statement. Another possible prompt for a short essay could be to have the student suggest a best solution to a problem in the discipline. And then a third would be to have a student walk through in a short essay what their problem solving process was. So on the handout that you got, um, there's a section here where it has the short essays and there are three example prompts. I'd like you to take a couple of minutes with those nearby you to read those prompts and to think about this question. Which type of prompt would work best in a course that you teach and why? Okay, so take a couple of minutes to look at those and talk about that with a partner. Okay, thank you for discussing that in groups. I'd like you to send your attention back up here, um, and we'll come back to where you are in your thought process in a little bit. Um, so the next type of writing that um, I'd like to share with you is this exploratory writing genre. So this is a type of exercise where students get to think out loud on paper. It's much more free form. They're not necessarily worried about whether a reader will be able to follow what they're writing. And yet, it can be a really useful tool for them as thinkers. And this was a quote that I found very inspiring. It's by a, um, it was said by a physics professor who published over 270 academic papers. <laughs> um, but I really liked this one quote, which was, I'm never so clear about a matter as when I have just finished writing about it. The writing process itself produces that clarity. Indeed, I often write memoranda to myself solely for the purpose of clearing up my own thinking. And I really like that because I'm curious, how many of you do this? I do this. <laughs> we, are, we are writing as we think. We write for the purpose of thinking. It's, it's interconnected and it helps us clarify where we are. And the idea of having an opportunity to show a student that they have this tool available to them is so exciting to me. And that can be done by having them do exploratory writing in, um, in a course. So there are a couple of purposes, specific ways that exploratory writing could be used in a classroom setting. One might be if there's a discussion going on that's starting to lag, maybe it's time to cut that down, cut that, <laughs> and have people write about the question for a moment so that they get more into their thoughts. Or if the discussion is becoming heated for some reason, that could be a very exciting time to have students write. Um, another option would be to have students use writing in the class um, as a way of synthesizing information that you've just presented to them. So they're, they're imprinting that in their minds before they even leave. And then another 
kind would be to use writing in the class so that the student is verbalizing questions or confusions that they have. And that one really spoke to me because I was a physics major. I was, very, I was often very confused in lectures. I, I got lost immediately every time, like within about one minute. And this prompt could have been uh, like a salvation for me <laughs> in those moments. And, um, this, this is one way that that writing prompt was phrased, which I really like, and I feel that it's versatile for any time a lecture is given. Uh, so it's, if you, have, if you have understood my lecture so far, summarize my main points in your own words. If you're currently confused about something, please explain to me what is puzzling you. Ask me the questions you need answered. And the reason I like this prompt so much is because it's asking students to identify the root of their confusion. Where does that initiate? And that's where they have to start to learn the next thing. So this prompt was um, very exciting to me. Um, next, there are a couple of, uh, there are three other short prompts for exploratory writing that's semi-structured that are in your handout under, at the kind of the bottom of that first page. And so with your partners, I'd like you to read those three examples. And these are semi-structured prompts. They could be used in class or outside of class. And so um, take a look at those three short prompts. And um, I would just like you and your partner to talk about what you think the purpose of each of those prompts would be. What would a student gain by writing each of those? OK, so take a few minutes to do that. OK, thank you for discussing. Um, now we're going to go on to a, a different type of activity where hopefully you can incorporate what you talked about in these last two discussion times. What I'd like you to do is use the, the notepad of paper that you got and the pencil. And I'm going to time you in doing a, a, a focused free write right now where you're tasked with writing a prompt for your course. It could be formal or it could be exploratory, but something that you think would help your students. And so take five minutes and come up with an idea that you like. So now that you have a writing prompt that you might want to use in your class, there's immediately this next problem, which is how could you implement that without having it take too much of your time as an instructor? So there are a few strategies that I'd like to mention, and I go into a little bit more detail with some more ideas on the handout as well. But a couple of strategies that I think can help uh, are first to read a sample of student work. And this might be in a situation where you're trying to figure out where your students are in their thinking, not necessarily a situation where you're giving them specific feedback on what they've written. But if, you, if a professor can read a random sample, it's possible that common patterns and confusion could be identified, or a model could be identified that could be shared with the class and maybe discussed in class. Then in situations where the purpose is for students to receive feedback on their writing, it can help a lot to focus those comments on one or two questions or suggestions where the professor is thinking about what's the next thinking step I want this student to take and how can I phrase a question that will help the student arrive at that place. So that's something to keep in mind rather than giving exhaustive feedback that takes a lot of your time and that might be overwhelming to a student. And finally, it's easier to read and evaluate better writing. So here are a couple of tips that can help with that. One is to make sure that the assignment description is clear. And one, um, one way to do that is to make sure that these top three questions have very obvious answers in the assignment prompt. So those are, who is the student writing to? What is the initial stance of that audience? What is the student's purpose in writing to that audience? So if those, the answers to those questions are obvious, that can really help the student know what to do. 
Another strategy can be to provide a model response to a similar prompt. That can, uh, that's something I think we do a lot as writers is we base what we're doing. We learn from templates. And so having students do that is preparing them for writing later on as well. And finally, uh, I encourage you to use the Writing Center and the Science Writing Center specifically as a resource. So we meet with uh, our tutors, we have about 15 tutors, and they can meet with students one-on-one, -on -one, and it gives students a chance to talk through their thinking, and they also read their writing out loud during those sessions, and that can help a lot with students clarifying their ideas and their organization. I recommend that bef having them come visit the Science Writing Center before they submit to you and during the revision process as well. It can be very helpful. Next, I'd just like to touch on a couple of examples from USU professors that I really liked. This is an excerpt from an, a plant and animal populations lab by Clark Rushing, taught this last spring. Um, you are a state wildlife biologist who has been tasked with recommending which of three possible actions should be used to reduce breeding cowbird populations that are a threat to an endangered species. Be sure your recommendation includes a description of the management challenge and your objective, a brief justification and description of your methods, a comparison of the predicted outcomes under each scenario, a figure showing the predicted trajectories for the cowbird population under each scenario, a specific management rec recommendation, and potential limitations or risks of that recommendation. So um, what are some things that you think work well in this prompt? Yeah. I think the way the steps written helps to write more and clear. So I like that was the steps. Great, excellent. So having the steps laid out really helps. It's very clear what they are looking for. I also feel like those steps could help you grade in the end, too, because you know what you're looking for throughout the paper. Excellent. Yeah, so this is kind of like your rubric. <laughs> um, OK, and was there one other comment? I think the whole kind of role-playing setup, too, of imagining yourself in the state wildlife biologist position is, is pretty useful, too, for getting people out of their own sort of way of thinking of something as well. Yes, yeah, excellent. Yeah, so it feels like a real-life situation. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and then the last example I wanted to share is for a different type of assignment. This is from Noel Beckman's course that uh, was taught in the spring of 2018. This was for a longer research paper, and she broke it down into steps. And so those were where students identified a research topic. They wrote an exploratory essay uh, about the topic early on in the process, which I found very interesting. Then she had them visit the Science Writing Center during the drafting process, and they did a peer review. And I'd just like to look in a little bit of detail about the prompt for the exploratory essay. So she asked students to describe their process in generating and developing their ideas. The purpose of this exploration is to stimulate thinking about your process and to, dis to discuss any difficulties. And these were questions um, to get their ideas flowing. How did your thinking and ideas evolve? What sources helped you form your argument? What were your strategies in finding sources? And uh, so, I'm curious, what benefit do you think a writing prompt like this would have for students early on in developing a research paper? I know. I'm not going to do it. I feel like it would help them pinpoint exactly what they want to write their, their essay about, because mm -hmm. I find that's one of the hardest points. They just spend a lot of time trying to figure out what exactly their focus is going to be for their paper. Excellent. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, I was <laughs> just going to say, it gets them thinking early on about mm. sources. Yes. Right? Because many <laughs> students think they know how to find scientific articles, but they don't know how to use them. Yes. So it's really going into that process of finding resources early. Excellent. OK. Um, so 
we're going to skip ahead to questions, but I am um, interested in mentioning just a couple of things that the Science Writing Center offers to professors as a resource. So we can help professors design assignments. We can provide feedback on assignment descriptions. We do in-class activities. Um, if you want students to reverse outline an assignment, we can come in and lead an activity like that for your class. Um, and we also provide one-on-one -on -one sessions where students are working with a tutor. And I wanted to show you this list, but also say that we are a new entity. We're expanding. We're trying different things. So if you have an idea of something that you'd like us to do, to offer to you, please jot that down on the notepad. And there's a little bin by this um, near the recorder in the back where you could leave that for me. Um, and I'll take a look at it and see if we can offer that um, as something that we do. And um, I'd like to just take a couple of minutes for questions. And um, if the pr professors who had recommendations to share would like to, this would be a time for that as well. Yes. Can I, can I grab that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK, we're going to do it. <laughs> can statewide campus faculty take advantage of the Writing Center? Yes, great question. Fantastic. So we do offer. Uh, remote appointments through video chat for remote campuses. So yes, that's a, that has a very simple answer, and that's described on our website. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, do you have any recommendations for conv um, convincing the students that they're going to benefit from these exercises? That's a great question. I think um, by making the prompts simulate job experiences and positions that they might be in helps with that so that they can see themselves in that role and then they have a job to do. Um, that would be my first recommendation for that. Um, and there might be others that will come to us later. <laughs> so, um, all right, that might be time. Thank you so much for being here and um, yeah. <laughs>